Okay, it's 8.30. Yes, clerk, I'll start this meeting off since it's the first one of the new term. I'm just going to start with introductions since we have new folks on the board. We have Andy Alvarado, a new county administrator here. Tom Duffy, supervisor. Brian Bizonette, supervisor. Chris Rusk, supervisor. John Righeimer, supervisor. And Stacy Hessel is on Zoom. So, um, I call, hereby call this meeting to order on May 9th, uh, the Economic and UW Extension Committee meeting at 8.30 a.m. Let, let the record show that this meeting has been publicly noticed to the news media as required by Section 19.84 of the Wisconsin Statutes. I'll open the floor now for nominations for the position of chair. Once the chair is elected, he or she will conduct the election for the vice chair. A person receiving a majority vote of members entitled to a seat shall be declared elected. This vote shall take place by voice vote. If no majority is reached, balloting shall continue, including all nominees until a majority is reached. At this time, I will open the floor for nominations for the position of chair. Do I hear any nominations? Nominate Tom Duffy. Nomination for Tom Duffy. By Mr. Righeimer. I'll second that. Do we have any other nominations for chair of the Economic Development UW Extension Committee? Hearing no other nominations, we'll call for a unanimous voice vote for the position of chair for Mr. Tom Duffy. Do I hear the aye votes, please? Aye. Aye. Nay votes, please. By unanimous, unanimous vote, we have a new chair. Mr. Tom Duffy, okay, would you, you like to conduct the election for the vice chair? Same, the pay is the same as last year. <laughs> <laughs> the pay is the same. Yes. Pay? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's open up for vice chair. Any nominations for vice chair? I nominate John Ringheimer. Okay. Uh, any other nominations? Any other nominations? There are too many other nominations. You care to make a motion, then we cast unanimous ballot for John. Okay, congratulations, John. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the agenda then. Um, the um, media agenda is posted. Do anybody have any additions or corrections to the agenda is posted? If not, let's move on to the public comments. Um, anybody here has uh, wants to be heard? on uh, items that aren't on the agenda. How about on the mic? No hands up. Okay. Then we'll move on to uh, the minutes of the previous meetings. We've all been uh, provided with a copy to the minutes for April 11th. Anybody have any additions or corrections to those minutes? Not can we get a motion to approve them as presented? We have a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Thanks, John. Okay, Mr. Brian. Okay. Any uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. Okay, they're carried. So Surrey County Ag. Lori. Um, Oh, well, at the fair first. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's all right. So who's who's here for the fair? How about you, Stacy? Do you have any information on the fair? I do not have any information on the fair. Okay. Uh, well, we'll just put it on for the agenda for next week and the next month and see what's what. Okay. Now, Laura, you're on. Okay. Now I'm on. <laughs> so good morning, everyone. Good morning. I. Um, I have a, I feel like it's a traveling pony show of um, talking about extension and moving folks around. So um, I'll give you the quick speech and um, information for you and um, kind of go from there. So we typically present um, quarterly to this committee, although I try to come every month, um, but we'll have quarterly reports for you. And um, I think others have been on this committee before. So. Um, but I usually typically start out with this extension cord because I love props. And so I think about the University of Wisconsin extension really being an extension cord back to the University of Madison, um, but then extending the resources uh, from campus uh, throughout the state. So our educators are connected to um, connected to the university, but that doesn't mean 
we always do what they tell us to do, um, we also funnel back information from all the counties back to the university to let them know what we need in our communities. So that's what our educators do here. And I typically say there are three things to know about us when you first start to not overwhelm you. Um, but the first thing is that the community is our classroom. Um, that's what I say, the university, the um, Wisconsin's largest classroom is extension. So our educators are out in the community. So you probably will not find them in our the office very often, although Donna's been there working hard, getting mm -hmm. some stuff ready for 4-H, but um, usually you may not find this in our offices, which is different than so many other departments in the county. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is that you have a contract with us. So that's different than lots of departments in the um, county as well. Your contract with us um, pays, it's a contract fee that pays for the educators in the um, county offices. It's not a percentage, it used to be a percentage of um, salaries and benefits. It's not that anymore, it's just a contract fee. Um, Sawyer County has chosen to contract with us for positive youth development, which is 4-H and positive youth development, which is Donna. She's serving a couple different hats here on this committee today. Um, so 4-H is there, as well as community development, and that's at Riga. Um, Gregorian, who um, works with the community development of the county. You also get a third of Kevin Shusho out of the Spooner Ag Station. Sawyer County, Burnett, and Washburn County all pay for him, so he is split three ways, and we'll, we'll come to the committee every now and then and let you know what's happening there. Um, but those are the basic services that are in your contract that you pay for. Because you do that, you also get FoodWise, which is where Bridget um, Rongner and Kim Clark come in, and they um, are funded through SNAP Ed funds. Um, and as long as you have extension in your, your county, then you also get FoodWise. I, I feel like it's like a Kohl's um, coupon. Well, the, there's a discount, which is Kohl's coupon, and they are the Kohl's cash that you just get free um, when you do with extension. So um, FoodWise is here, and they do a lot of um, education in the community, especially with um, food insecure folks. So they do work with WIC, and I think most of our schools qualify and all that. So they're in the community doing um, work for uh, helping people learn more about how to, how to feed themselves. So um, classroom, contract, and the third thing to know about us is partnerships. We really try hard to not duplicate any services in the county, but work with other people <coughs> to kind of support and enhance the programming that's happening and even offer new programs that, that maybe there aren't set in the county to provide or because we have connections to other resources, um, we're able to, to leverage that to provide some really good prevention education in the communities. So that's the three things to know about us. And um, in this packet of information, on one side you'll find kind of our last few quarter reports, so you can get up to speed with us of what we've been doing in the community. Um, a long letter, if you really like to read things, you can read that letter from me. And then the contract is in there, so you can see what the contract looks like, as well as some of the um, funding and how extension is funded with some bigger funds. And then on this side is some programming that's coming up and a little bit more information specifically about 4-H uh, compliance. And that's enough, isn't it? Um, the only other thing that I would say is that welcome to Andy. I worked with Andy over in West County, so I'm thankful that PCI will be able to work together. And I know we were touching base a little bit about maybe the university, CITY. Um, opportunities and some partnerships that might serve Sawyer County well too. So, questions? Good, thanks. Last month you mentioned about the grant rate. Is that still going forward? Yeah, so in here, Arika has her kind of fall classes with now. Intro to grant writing is in there in October. Um, advanced grant writing is in November, but we also talked with Andy about if there are some specific things that we can do just county department heads or some other kind of, yeah. not waiting for this, um, she partners with LCO College a lot, um, but waiting for other opportunities to uh, really kind of assess what do we need and then be able to. So 
So, and if you can encourage the department heads to get people to enroll in that thing, there must be grants out there that we haven't even applied for, you know, and we all need money. So why not try it, you know? So we'll keep that on the monthly agenda. Okay, anybody else have any questions? No? Stacy, any questions? No. Okay. Well, thank, thanks, Lori. Let's move on then to Hayward Lakes. Uh, Sherry. Okay, so I didn't really have a report because right now we've been kind of going through the SWOT analysis. So I just kind of gave you a couple of pages of what we've been finding out. I've never been involved in this. This is brand new to me. And if you've never heard of it, SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And so we're just kind of taking a look at our organization and trying to find out um, a strategic plan, which we've never had. We have a mission statement, we have a vision statement, and we've always just zeroed in on marketing, but we realized we didn't have a strategic plan. So that is what we're working on right now. Um, so I don't know how much you want me to go into that. We're at the point now where we're going to work on the opportunities. So the survey goes out today on what priorities the board wants to go forward with. Andy has been through plenty of these. This is my first. So, um, so I don't know how many, I don't know if you guys have any questions, but that's kind of what we've been doing the last couple months, which has been a big undertaking. How about a feedback from the openers? Any idea? A fishing opener, is that good? Um, or? Fishing opener. I was actually in Shell Lake, which um, the governor was in Shell Lake, which I find interesting because the, radio, the TV stations wanted to come to Hayward, even though we were all in Shell Lake. So that gives us a little pat on the back, even though when I called them and I said, we're going to be in Shell Lake, they're like, well, we're coming to Hayward. And I said, well, we're going to be in Shell Lake. <laughs> <laughs> we're coming to the Hall of Fame. We like Hayward. It was all Hayward on the news, too. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel kind of bad, but because it back to Golden Fishing Opener. Yeah. So okay. I don't know if you guys want, want all that history, but Wisconsin Indian Head Country's done it for 56 years or something, and they decided they had enough. Dad was retiring, and so um, ITBEC took it over, which is the International Trade Economic Business Council. And um, there's 13 counties, and we all work together, so we're going to pass it around, and we're all going to help each other. So we were, all the counties were in um, Washington County this first year. We had opener last year, so I was kind of the chairman of the vision opener because I had the most experience. So, okay. and it, they had a great turnout. The governor was there, the lieutenant governor was there, the department of um, the DNR secretary was there, the secretary of tourism was there. I mean, it was really, really they get any fish. Yes, he caught fish, oh, wow. and he had. He had from 8.20 to 9.15 to catch a fish. <laughs> so these women, they are called the Wisconsin Women, Wisconsin Women's Fishing Club. They were the, actually the girls who were guiding him. So they went out at five in the morning and fished the lake and they mark up the spots. So <laughs> when they got him in the boat, they right where we go. So, yeah, he had to get to a funeral, so but it was a very, very nice event. We shortened it. It used to be three days, it used to be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We shortened it to Friday and Saturday. Um, we had a beautiful banquet. The governor spoke. And good weather. Spoke. Nice weather. Nice weather for Saturday. Beautiful weather. Really yeah. important. John, you have some questions. I do, yeah. And if they I have a handful, and if it takes too long, then maybe yeah. oh. we can do it afterwards. Okay. I was at the SWAT on the weekends. It's a local research, lead marketing data, local economic impact data. What does that mean exactly? Lead research. So this, what I did was we gave this out to our board members, and these are the answers they gave us. And so what came, what it came down to is they felt like we, we don't, we get the numbers from the state. But they don't feel like it really gives us uh, numbers for sort of county. So they want us to work harder at getting those numbers drilled down. Is it like a cause so, and effect? Like, like we're not knowing what you know, we're economic causes, and then mm -hmm. what's the effect of it, positive and negative? That's what we need to know better. Um, no, I got the opinion they did. They wanted to know the um, like who's coming, like. I know who my target market is, yeah. and, and I'm reaching out to those people, but they want to know actually who's coming here, when they're coming here, 
they want more of that data. So we are um, we're doing the rival list. Did you ever do the rival list? Yeah. No. So I think that's going to bring a lot of more local data to the local. You want me to? So yeah. The, the, Can you help me? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I I'll try. So like the well this week or next week tourism week this week next week it was last week, last week. but you know none of the numbers are coming out until June okay June 6th great but usually in, uh, tourism week the state gives us numbers gives counties and regions numbers on economic impact like how much tourism dollars are spent how much employment how much taxes but they're very high level and they're mm -hmm. not real detailed as to how they get to those numbers so some destinations pay extra to that firm to do a deeper dive oh, into okay. the economic data. I mean, yeah, there's data out there, but a lot of it is there's you don't get into the inner workings of it. So you can pay for it, or destinations can also do like um, you know take your email list and do a survey back to people that travel here and ask them when did you come, why did you come, how much did you spend. Gotcha. So it's better information of knowing yeah. which seems yeah. to be important. Which goes to another question: funding threat. Um, so that would be funded either by your bureau, or the county would help fund that possibly. So they're saying, they're saying lack saying, of threat, lack of funding the threat. So I don't know if that's yeah, because we used to in the past we get sixty thousand dollars from the county, and then um, last year was only ten thousand, but they gave they found another forty thousand through ARPA funds. So one of the threats that they're saying is that we could lose forty thousand dollars this next year. Um, and then room tax, we have they have that on there as a threat because of the fact that the townships decide if they want room tax or not. But we have a contract. Right. Counties, which right. That. And they have we have a contract with them. So they could say we're not going to contract with you. You know, so those are the threats that it could be right now we've got room tax and we collect collect it from some foreign, um, some municipalities, but they could if they wanted. And, and lack of local infrastructure. Under competition. Not enough hotels or something. We had um, Julie Fox, she's the regional manager for from the Department of Tourism put this together. So um, and this was what our people, the answers they gave us. So, you know, this is just their opinion. No, oh, right, yeah, I mean, I understand that the face value is, you know, there's any oh. backdrop to it. And then workforce housing shortages in our economy. Yes, um, they're having a really hard time, some of the resorts, like getting cleaners and, and stuff because they have nowhere, like if they could call the students from other areas, they have nowhere to house them. Yeah. And so they're out of luck. If they can't find somewhere for them to stay, then they don't have, they can't find them to come. And a lot of <clears throat> a lot of the resort owners need a lot of people on a Saturday, but they might not need them for the rest of the week. Short term housing. Yeah. Short -term. And then divisiveness, politics. <clears throat> um, we um, we made a lot of enemies with the whole room tax thing, mm -hmm. so we're trying. Oh, okay, so we're to work really okay. hard to, you know, I'm trying to stay in touch with the room tax different municipalities and staying on top of it and if they have questions and so that they, they don't feel threatened. So the, the, the folks don't like it, the, the owners don't like it in Texas. Not all of them, just a handful, but yeah. so we're just trying to, yeah. Would that be part of the the um the research? I mean I mean I can understand why an owner doesn't want a room tax, but I mean is the data there to say that's what's stopping people from coming here? Yeah, or can you yeah, find that yeah, out? It doesn't stop them from yeah. coming. I mean, my my, so. my history with room tax is that it's not a not an issue with the travel because not more than like anywhere you go, you're paying a room tax. Yeah, right, like adults everywhere. <laughs> Big room tax. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, and I mean, and through this whole thing too, we kind of found out that um, locals don't know who we are, what we do, and so we're really pushing to get the word out on what we do. And I know Lynn, back in the day, we tried to become one with the Chamber of Commerce. We were trying to be one entity, and so we do some confusing for everybody, and now, now they want to break. So now we're trying to break that cohesiveness, so. Well, one last question is maybe to 
to time or the uh, under the um, housing shortage. Now I'm new, so I know there was a big vote on the RV park last month. You know, I didn't really know something like this. Would would had I been here, is the totality of this kind of brought into a decision like that? I mean, again, if that's a threat and or a weakness, I didn't remember that being discussed. Well, there's no huh. need. There's a there's a need for housing for sure in general. Uh, but the neighbors were really against this whole project, right. and they showed up in mass here. Right. And and the county board is a political, right. you know, they do that sort of thing also. Look around, and right. So even though it passed, it didn't pass by the super majority that it needed. No, I I, I, I understand that. I just didn't. Yeah. The the housing shortage I don't think played into that discussion or consideration about that. Right. I didn't hear it discussed. Okay. So on a scale from one to ten, how bad is housing shortage um kind of being terrible <laughs> I, i've talked to sherry about this already and i would say it's eight nine okay, ten so i think we missed an opportunity there. i mean that's yeah, especially opinion. for i mean the, the key is workforce housing if you're it's, yeah. it's affecting us as a county even to fill right. positions if you're looking at moving into the area you don't want to drive an hour and you, there really is not a whole right. lot there for okay. rental or uh, affordable housing to buy so that's limiting a lot of employers okay I would agree, you know, I mean, my two cents, uh, because of tribe, we we faced the same thing out there. Uh, we've had professional people that wanted to be employed by the tribe, but they can't come here, they can't find any housing. An RV park is just a temporary seasonal thing. It's right. not, not the housing that we're looking at and needing in the county here. So the tribe is really doing our, um, they're putting their ARPA funds towards community housing um, at this point um, I'm not sure if we would be housing uh, non tribal members but my hunch is that uh, there might be an opportunity where the tribe can help out in that area okay so excellent okay good Jerry, thanks yes, two comments with follow up on Jerry so she mentioned the it back I just want for the board members to point out that ITBEC is a division of the Wisconsin Counties Association. So our counties group formed the ITBECs. This region is one of the few ITBEC regions left. I still think they really need to change the name because it doesn't do much with international trade anymore. Um, I don't think we discussed it, but for some reason they can't change it. They all looked into it. Yeah. So, and then, um, so just you'll see in the budget that the county does allocate, I think it's $3,000 to the ITBEC partnership insurers are representative. Yeah, and then you um, appoint me for two years, and I'm actually up. I think we just reappointed me, which okay. is what I heard. Yep. I have some people work in my office for that. Oh. Yeah. And then, yeah, if you haven't, I know it was no small task, the fishing opener, I've been through that. I know the no small task for them to take it over. Um, but if you get the Milwaukee Journal, they got a really good write up on how successful it was, and they caught fish. There was was that Paul Smith? Paul Smith wrote up a great article. Good. Yeah, we'll talk to him. You can't buy a Milwaukee Journal in town. I read it online. <laughs> How many uh, townships do we have for our room of tax rooms for? So with Hayward Lakes, we have the town of Round Lake, the town of Bass Lake, the town of Hayward, and the town of Hunter. But the town of Lenwood collects and they give to the Nelson Lake Resort Association and the city of Hayward collects and gives to the Hayward Chamber of Commerce. So there's six all together. So what's the Round Lake? Round Lake just started in January, so I haven't got my first so, check yet. Yeah, I was gonna say, didn't they they didn't want to do that for a long time if I remember it? No, but they passed it and they started collecting in January. And I did talk to the clerk and I had a hard time collecting. This first quarter, but um, we're working. Charge from the mail. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So good. Thanks, Sherry. Thanks, John, for your questions. Chris, you have any questions? No. 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 Okay. Um, Sherry, any questions? Say something. No. Thank you. Um, one last thing. What, what's going on in the Walker Hotel down there? The old Walker Hotel, uh, new roofs or something? But no. Looks like new roofs. Yeah. I mean, I haven't been told anything. No. Yeah. We keep going over and snooping around. We it's been vacant for so long. You think this? We saw some refrigerators getting delivered. So huh. we heard it might be like um, an Airbnb huh. units. Nothing official. Yeah. You, can't, you, know, you can report next month. 
<laughs> Let us know. <laughs> Steve, Steve. I mean, you, I'm working my own more because you guys actually rented it for the for, for the week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We we'll do that. We'll check it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's move on to uh, Northwest Regional Planning. Who's here for that? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, Ken Pearson here with Northwest Regional Planning Commission. Sheldon sends his regards. He is um, out of town this week, so he sent me to be to represent the commission. Um, I send a, one of these, I'm the loan fund manager for commercial and small business loans. We have a revolving loan fund, uh, 15 different lending sources and four different lending entities make that up. Um, Northwest Wisconsin Business Development Corporation, Northwest Regional, or Northwest Regional Planning Commission has a couple loans, Wisconsin Business Innovation Corporation, and then Northwest Wisconsin Regional Economic Development Fund. In that last one, New Red, Northwest Wisconsin Regional Economic Development Fund, um, was a consolidated fund from CDBG economic development dollars back in 2006 and 2007 under a regional effort of the governor that time uh, to consolidate a, a pockets of revolving loan funds, CDBG revolving loan funds from across the state. Um, and seven, seven counties participated in that consolidation of loan funds, Sawyer County being one of them. Um, so now that specific loan fund has about four and a half million dollars of defederalized money, um, which means we can use it for construction renovation, um, remodeling, as well as furniture, fixtures, equipment, inventory, working capital. Uh, the other three revolving loan fund or loan entities um, are bread and butters, mostly machinery, equipment, uh, furniture, inventory, land purchase, real estate, down payment, stuff like that, but we can't do renovations, construction. So the good news is that because Sawyer County decided to consolidate their pockets of CDBG dollars back in 2006, you now have the full Sawyer County businesses have the full, um, the full toolbox, I guess, at, at your disposal from, for all small business purposes and needs. And I want to say hi to Andy. Um, Andy was also on our new red board uh, back when he was over in Russ County. And now he's in Sawyer County, which is wonderful uh, for everyone. And um, I'm very excited to be working with him in this capacity now on the Sawyer County side. And congratulations to all of the new or all of the elected officials here today. Um, you know, we, we do a lot of good work at regional planning. And a lot of that comes from working hand in hand with our elected officials and, and uh, city and county administrators. So we really appreciate all the hard work you do. Um, oh, just a brief overview. Um, as I said, uh, we work in conjunction with banks. So we're not here to compete with banks. We're here to help fill that capital gap that some of our community lenders may not be able to do. Um, so say there's a $100,000 project. Um, the bank might be looking at doing $60,000 of it we might come in and do another twenty to $30,000. And then the ownership group would be able to, um, you know, come up with the last 10. So we work with banks to try to help make their deals stronger. Um, we also work with businesses that might not be bankable. So maybe it's a startup business or a business that, that has hit a rough patch, um, but's on the recovery, but needs to make a couple small adjustments, buy a piece of machinery or equipment, uh, the bank might not be interested in it because the machinery equipment might be a little too niche for the lending portfolio. So then we would, we would step in and help with that lending need uh, to get the project done. So we're very flexible and versatile in what we can do. Um, but primarily we work with banks, but we can step in in other capacities as well to help fill that lead. Uh, I sent a snapshot of our 2020 lending report. And um, the good news is that... Um, we received about 20% of our total inquiries of the year from Sawyer County. Um, out of the 29 total loans that were awarded out of all four lending entities, five loans were awarded to Sawyer County businesses. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but however, um, about a third of the total loan proceeds um, went to Sawyer County businesses. So they were receiving a larger portion of the lending need compared to other small businesses across the 10 county region. And about 33% of the Sawyer County businesses that inquired were awarded funds. So that's really strong. We've, we got a lot of really strong referrals from local banks, from the economic development people when they were there, 
um, you know, just from individual referrals from business to business referrals, all sorts of stuff. So people send us really solid projects and in turn, we, we get we're able to do a lot more loans. Um, as far as other regional planning aspects right now, um, I know we're working on getting our housing funds out. Uh, and we partner with Sawyer County and the other counties in the region to make sure that we're getting housing rehab uh, monies available and out to the public to help with low to moderate income individuals, put sidings, new windows, lead and asbestos abatement, um, upgrades, new roof, things of that nature. Um, sometimes it leads to a whole new house rebuild, but that's not um, as often. Those are 0% loans that go against the property and then paid back at the time of sale. And we're also administering the Main Street Bounce Back program. I don't have numbers with me today, I apologize for that, but it's been a very successful program over the last year, year and a half. Kate Costello and Crystal Rohde in our office administer that fund. Um, it's a grant program up to $10,000 for businesses that move into a vacant location um, for the purposes of running a, a business. Um, it's open to any business um, as long as they are operational and, and operational signed a lease or uh, purchased a facility and it was vacant. vacant. And vacant is very, um, is a loose held term but it's meant to spur uh, business growth and small business growth in underserved areas um, and also high volume main street areas as well. Um, so I know that program has gone so well that the state has given us another million dollars uh, to get out the door. So, you know, you can do the quick math, um, $10,000 per small business and a million dollars. That's a lot of funding that goes to a lot of small businesses throughout the 10 county region. So, if you know of any small business owner that has recently signed a loan or purchased a building that has been vacant, um, you know, maybe 30 days, three years, five years, what have you, um, have them contact Kate or Crystal in the office and get an application, or they can go to our website, nwrpc.com and find the Main Street Bounce Back program to get more information. Um, but that's all the information I have now. Um, I do, as far as that new red, um, Todd, my new red program has seven loan committee members. Todd Knutson um, from Johnson Bank had been the Sawyer County representative from the beginning of the program back in 2007. And he retired, as you all may know, um, April 1st. So the Sawyer County seat is currently available. Um, I'm, I've been in contact with, with Tweed, Chairman Tweed, to fill that position. Um, so, uh, but it is an open position that I have. Um, and I know Andy was the representative for Russ County um, when he was over there. So that position is also open. And I've been in contact with their county board chairman to help fill that position as well. So um, there, I do have two positions open on my loan committees, um, but we'll get those filled and the program will be up and running and being able to do some good things. So that's all I have for my report. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Anybody have any questions? Right. Just, just some clarification. The the north the, the regional funding in the example 60k comes from the bank 20 to 30 from them that's state funded is that oh yeah our, our we receive source there's a bunch of different places we receive our sources of fund, funding from excuse me uh the first fund we received was from the economic development administration back in 1983 uh it was for a revolving loan fund so it was a grant to us for i think it was about a million dollars that uh, we then turn into a loan program, a revolving loan fund program to the community. And that's been around for, gosh, almost 40 years now. Over time, we've received more EDA grant awards. Uh, we also received a couple USDA intermediary relending program monies. So that's a loan that the USDA makes to us. And then we in turn lend out to the communities and then they pay us back. And then we pay the USDA back. Um, and once we pay, we just had one of the loans paid off from, from the USDA to us. So that, that's another pot of unrestricted funds now that we have to help the communities grow for economic development purposes. Um, so we get a lot of federal funds and then we have an SBA microloan program, excuse me. I decided to stay home today instead of come up to Sawyer County. So <laughs> I'm fighting a little cold. Um, but the SBA microloan program 
is again another loan from the SBA, the Small Business Administration that's made to us. We pay that loan back to the SBA, but we also turn the dollars around and, and lend out to uh, the small businesses in our community. So a lot of our funding comes from the federal government. Um, we do receive some state funds for our programming. Um, that's more to help with that's more to help with on the matching side to get the program up. Like say we get a new new tranche of money from the federal government, the state WDC may give us give us a little bit of funds to help cover administrative costs while we get that fund up and running. Um, and then the state eventually phases out and then the federal money theoretically is able to hold its own and become self-sustaining over time off the interest charged. And I know everyone freaks out when you hear interest. Our interest rates are 4%. Um, right now, they will eventually go up to 5%. Um, a lot of the community banks in the area and, and regional national banks are between 55 to 7.5% already. So we're very, very low interest rate financing to help, again, help the businesses succeed, the banks that we work with succeed. And then in turn, we get, we get paid back um, and are able to continue revolving the funds to another project. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Okay, thanks, Sean. Any, any questions, Chris? No? I'm good. Brian? No, I'm good. No. Okay, thanks, thanks Ken, for your report. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, let's move on then to uh, what? Economic Development Corporation. Uh, Sh Sherry, do you have any information? Uh, anybody have any information on Jessica's Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Jessica Wigner Schultz. Okay, you're on. There we go. Um, I am the president of the Sawyer County Lacoudere Economic Development Corporation Board, um, and I work at Lacoudere Ojibwe College. Um, I'm the director of institutional advancement at the college. So it's great to meet you all um, uh, over Zoom, at least. Um, I did share a few uh, materials with, with Lynn. So you have our annual report. I won't read through any of these. Our annual report from last year, our current board list, um, and then our strategic goals for 2022. Um, it is our last, this year is our last year of our current strategic plan. Um, so I did want to share with you that um, actually this week we will be revisiting our strategic plan for the next three years, the next three year cycle. Um, uh, so that uh, information will come in the June uh, report. Uh, but on the current uh, funding priorities, or not sorry, uh, current um, strategic priorities, uh, we will be hiring a new executive director to execute those new priorities. We um, stepped away from an executive director uh, for a few months as we were um, coming, as we have come through the pandemic now, the priorities that we had for that exec executive director have um, shifted or will shift um, as we move forward into this next year and into future years. Um, so we wanted to reevaluate our strategic goals and then uh, rewrite the job description for the executive director and then bring on someone that could execute those goals. Um, we had a great partnership with our previous executive director and are grateful for his participation with us. Um, so as you can see on the screen, um, those goals, again, I won't read them. Um, I will share that we are meeting with the Winter Chamber tomorrow um, to execute planning for our one of our first placemaking events for the year. Um, and then we've been in communication with the Tribal Governing Board um, on uh, planning uh, a placemaking event with LCO. Um, so both of those events will happen this year. Um, we will also be launching a fundraising campaign this summer um, that will be coming um, in the next couple of, of months um, in partnership with a marketing contractor that we have uh, with us. She'll be managing that. Um, and that is, that's kind of the highlights of, of what's going on right now. Our board does meet monthly, um, the second Thursday of the month, um, and our executive committee meets the first Thursday of every month. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody have any questions? If not, let's move on to the libraries. Molly, you're on. Okay, my name is Molly Lank Jones, for those of you who might not know me, and I've been director at the Hayward Library for 27 years. But don't worry, because my assistant director is a good 10 years younger than me. So we will carry on the tradition. Um, I do a director's report every month for my board, and you all are the first to see it, actually, because my board meeting is the next day. 
uh, what a couple of things I wanted to mention is you're going to hear a lot of the same thing from Donna and me because she is the director of the Winter Library and we do a lot of similar programming. Um, we're all about community partnerships as well. I've heard that discussed this morning quite a bit and also about equal access because we still, as you're all aware, do not everyone is able to get internet access in the surrounding areas. So what we do is for our summer reading program, which is outlined here in this newsletter, um, we make sure that we have activities that children can do with or without internet access. And a couple of things are, um, we have a story walk on the nature trail. So 24 hours a day, uh, the people can walk on our nature trail behind the library that does connect with the hospital trail. And we have every few feet, two pages of a children's book. So it's really, my office looks right over the pond and the trail so I can see so many families walking on it, which is great. And another thing we do is we make take and make kits, which really kind of stemmed from COVID. That's one of the better things that came out of the last two years. And we have um, just the basic items that kids would need to make different crafts. And we have simple ones to a little bit more elaborate that the parents need to help with. But we even like, we had a Yoda puppet last week and we cut out the ears and provided the glue stick and the sack and for the puppet and people love it because they can either just pick it up if they still don't want to come in the library, which thankfully people are coming back. But if they don't want to, they can pick it up at curbside or they come in and pick them up for the kids. Um, we also, for summer reading, something that I love to do, my husband happens to work at WOJB. So I have an in there and they broadcast our story times for our special story times for summer reading that Paul Mitchell and Judy Young, and I, some of you have been here long enough to know those two used to write very amusing travel articles together. So now they do a reader's theater type of reading of children's books, doing the different voices, and they're hilarious. But OJB airs them twice a day during the summer. So that's another thing that we're excited about. And then on the back page, I pretty much list our calendar of events. Um, just so everybody knows what it's kind of a behind the scenes thing i include all the people in the application that staff and i have are required to take and uh as long with as our programs along with their programs and one thing that we're doing this year for a new thing at the end of summer reading is the junior national naturalist program so Cable Natural History Museum is really trying to establish a presence in this area too. So they're sending down some of their naturalists and uh, if we get Emily, we have to pay a little more. So we rely on donations for some of that. But this is for children a little bit older than our story hour usually targets. And they walk around the trail and they wade in the pond and they learn, you know, they get nice and dirty like they like and <coughs> learn about natural Hayward critters and all that kind of thing. So what we're trying to do is, is be educational and also provide physical activities at the same time. So kind of an all around health thing. So anyway, I think that's the gist of it. There is a photo in this report that shows pre-COVID uh, the number of children we had in the library for summer reading programs. It's always been shoulder to shoulder. And we're aiming to get back to that. Okay, good. Thanks, Molly. Any questions, anybody? 
Okay, let's go to the Winter Library. All right, well, I am Donna Nucky. I'm the Winter Public Library Director. Lori introduced me as also an extension person that I've been in this that position for just a couple months. So, um, but today I'm representing the library and I just wanna read our mission statement and Molly's I'm sure is very similar, but the mission of the Winter Public Library is to provide quality materials and services which fulfill the education, information, cultural and recreational needs of the entire community in an atmosphere that is welcoming, respectful, and businesslike. So we, we offer programming is, I think, really big in libraries, um, not just for youth, but also for adults. But before I get into the opportunities that we have for that, um, I've been talking with the board about our basement issues. Um. So the libraries in Sawyer County are funded um, outside of the county levy, and we do rely on county funding, um, as well as donations and fundraising and grants and whatever we can get our hands on to help us provide services to the community in a safe environment. Um, but it's for, I know some of you have heard this before, even last year that winter had a water crisis and it happened to drain all into the library basement. We're in an older building, it's over 100 years old, but it's been very well maintained and structured, but we did have a dirt floor, we're surrounded in clay, um, and everything, 55,000 gallons drained into our basement. So um, last February, I believe a year ago now, um, so we worked really hard. Water has always been an issue, but this just like exasperated everything. So we were having issues, um, we knew that we needed to look at um, creating a project to help minimize the water drainage into our basement. We've worked all summer and all fall into airing everything out, but now we have black mold and a dirt floor basement. So we looked at different contractors to do cement work downstairs, and then uh, we don't use the basement at all for anything. Um, so then we contacted Duluth um, Basement services, DBS, to come in and do an analysis of our basement. We know that we're structurally sound, so that's a bonus for us. Um, we can get rid of the black mold, but instead of doing the cement work, which we thought putting cement down over the dirt floor would really help minimize the water problem and create better drainage to our sub pump, it's not. <laughs> our walls are problems. <laughs> The concrete is porous. The atmosphere in the basement is going to just keep creating that atmosphere for the mold. So we can get rid of it short term, but it's always going to be a problem. And our goal is to stay in that building for a long time because we own it. The library board owns this building. Um, and so we are looking at a $26,000 project um, to fix this issue. What they do is they take and there's probably more details but basically they take this big pool liner and they put it along all the walls and the flooring and create a drainage to the sub pump underneath with some other material underneath this lining and encase it um, and it's guaranteed for 25 years there's warranties on it they put we have a dehumidifier downstairs right now to help minimize everything but it's not enough so they have this massive piece of um, not only dehumidifier, but it also takes out the spores. So we're going to spray the basement. Our structure, they said, um, is very sound still. And so it's kind of like a hurry up, we need to do this so we can maintain the woodwork that's downstairs and keep everything, all the floor joists safe and sound. Because we have a lot of weight with the books and the shelving on the main floor. Um, so we have funds in our building fund. Um, but we, we have to put 50% down and then we have to pay for it in full when the project is done. And we really need to do this this summer. So this is our little black cloud right now. My library board, which is an 11 member library board, um, are looking into funding options. And Ron Buckholtz is a county rep on our board. So I'm throwing him under the bus because he's not here to defend himself. He said to ask the board to think about maybe ARPA funds. <coughs> If there were ARPA funds that help us offset the cost, I know that we're putting forth funds. We, we, and you'll hear about some of the fundraising we do. The problem is our fundraising is a thousand here, a couple thousand here. It takes us a long time to build up 
our savings. And we don't want to drain our savings completely because we might have another emergency, which is what happened last year. We had to pay for our lateral line that was that broke and leaked all that water into our basement. We had to pay for all that to, to fix because it wasn't even covered by insurance. So, so there's our dark cloud. Just keep that in mind when you're looking at ARPA funds. You know, I know that <clears throat> LCO Library, Hayward Library, Winter Library. We do our very best at trying to fundraise in addition to the county monies and to the you know, you know, donations that we get um, or grants. And we've talked about that before. Grant writing is great and there's grants out there, but sometimes it's more of a cost to us because if we commit to a grant, it requires us to put more money in than what we can actually get out of the grants. Um, and they're so specific. You know, a lot of it would be, we have a circulation or a print grant where we could buy things to catalog into our library, but that doesn't help us with the structural part or anything else. So, so that's where we're at. So think about us, if you can. We have a board meeting, another board meeting next week. We are looking at going to a local bank um, to look for funding. But again, this wasn't expected in our budget. So we still have to work out being able to add a payment and, an unexpected payment. The amount of savings, just out of curiosity, I mean, uh, what could the, the library contribute if, if the, um, you know, if you're asking us to match our funds, mm -hmm. or I mean, are you just well, out asking for the whole 20 No, no. So or? we for sure thought we could do the 50% down payment, which is, um, it'll be a little bit over. That'd be almost thirteen thousand dollars. I think the practice is twenty five thousand nine hundred sixty eight dollars. So um, we could do that comfortably. We could probably Ron would kill me to say it, but we could do a little bit more than that. Our fear is if there's something else that happens that's an emergency, we won't have access to you know savings built up. So I'm not a construction expert in mm -hmm. the stretch of the imagination, but I'm not. You know, I mean, I've seen. I've seen basements be uh, remediated, mm -hmm. so to speak, um, the flooding. Now, I'm not familiar with this membrane. You know, I'm assuming that they're putting some kind of drain tile in mm -hmm. to your song. Yeah. yeah. And so, if you look at other solutions, possibly, that would possibly be cheaper. Yeah, we have. And what we're finding is nothing was guaranteed. And you'd have to, and we hear different things from different people. And we just thought that this was the most, the one that was guaranteed to work for a warranty. Um, and we know that, so we talked about putting the basement floor, you know, like what if we did the concrete cementing? That would take care of the, the floor. But our walls are stone walls, they're old, and they have, you know, water seepage through that. So we thought about sealing off all the walls and we looked at different options. We are still this summer getting, cause we're, it's settled around the library. We're gonna put drain tile on around the library and make a sloping away from the building. We That's were able to get, thinking. yep. We were able to get the materials. We, we have to pay for the materials. We were able to get the labor donated. So we're fortunate for that. So we try to work with people or people are really good about working I'm with us. That, that won't be the solution? That will not be the solution just because we are surrounded by clay and so the water is still going to seep in. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like the water will sit in clay forever. Yeah, and so it just runs through. Um, so we felt like the best solution was this DBS because we've been working on this for a few so months. Is there a board acting on anything here? They are going to act next week, but this is, we're looking for and funding. are you officially requesting anything with our work today, or is that something you want to bring back to us? Oh, well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Ron had just mentioned to ask about ARPA funds, if that was a possibility. Well, I know we kind of, it's all in the wording, really. Yeah. I mean, you know, you don't want to ask for donations. You want to ask for preparedness, or what is it, prepare, respond. You know, you want to put that in your version. Right. Donations are pretty hard to spend. We actually dealt with that in the last meeting. Or, 
therefore ask for a donation, you know. You might want to check with Ken Pearson from that. I wrote it down. <laughs> I did when I saw this. I wrote it down. I'm like, I'm just going to email him. Yeah, you know, my, my hand is up to say that, um, Donna, let's have a conversation offline. Obviously, I want you to talk to your local bank, but there could be a few other resources available too, including our loan program. Um, and we do work with nonprofits as well. So I'm more than interested in learning, um, you know, seeing what can help. Perfect. I did. I, yeah. I started and circled it Good. as Thanks. he was Thanks, talking Ted. earlier. She'll be, she will contact you. <laughs> Definitely. Sounds great. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? Well, uh, well, I'm you can make comments about that if you want, but I do want to share though, regardless of our basement issue, we still have some fun, exciting things going on at the library. Our summer youth programming we have, um, I created a few years ago because I believe in youth voice. It's a, a youth advisory council. So we have youth that are too old for summer reading programs, but still want to be involved. So they're usually the ones that participated in summer reading program, uh, aged out and want to still help with it. So they do a lot of the planning and the activities that we do. So that's kind of fun for them. Um, we also have um a bird birding workshop we can't say bird watching they said it's birding workshop where we have local enthusiasts that are birders and they're creating a workshop for anybody who's interested in in birding um and for this summer we have outdoor movie theaters i know that yes, you're doing that too to that, yeah. <laughs> we have outdoor movie theaters um so we'll have family nights where they can come and enjoy an outdoor movie and just family time together um, it's always fun to do that. So we try and lots of fundraising because I want you to know that we don't just ask for handouts like we're doing our part in trying to fundraise. So Memorial weekend winter has this big Main Street craft fair that goes on down Main Street. Um, so we always are selling raffle tickets for last year we did a kayak. Um, we did our book sale is on Main Street. We also have uh, sold food. Um, this year we're doing the same thing. And because of our basement issue, we are fundraising also towards our basement. Um, so we're also doing that in addition to build, pulling out our funds. But like I said, those are usually, you know, a thousand, two thousand. We need the money like now. So we're working towards that. But we're looking at doing um, a rubber duck derby. So we sell ducks <laughs> all summer long. And then Labor Day weekend will be floating them down the, the Chippewa River over in winter. Fun. Yeah, so we're gonna try something new. So we're trying to be creative in fundraising. And so thank you for listening to me okay. go on. <laughs> thank you. Anybody else here? I forgot to tell you, we do have the Milwaukee Journal at the library. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Good, okay, any questions, anybody? Be in line. Nice. No. Okay, let's go on to the motorized trail. Hi. I'm Kathy LaRue with uh, Sawyer County Snowmobile and ATV Alliance. And we are gearing up for a busy ATV season. It's a growing sport. I have personally been working on the trails. I've eaten a lot of dust, so I apologize if I'm <laughs> clearing my throat quite often here. Um, the county and federal forest trail should be opening on the 15th. Um, Greg Peterson from the county indicated he might open this coming Friday the 13th, the county trails. We'll wait and see about that. Um, our goal this year is to collect accurate data. So we purchased three trail counters um, in this winter during the snowmobile season. It's been a learning process with those, but I'm going out this week with a couple other members and we'll be placing trail counters before the season opens so that we can gather real data and uh, see where we're at with how much ATV traffic we have on specific trails. Um, we've spent three or four weeks now. I've been on one of the chainsaw crews, which is just not fun, <laughs> but uh, we've got all the trails open with the exception of some over in the LCO still. It's a big pine tree down on you know, Blueberry Fire Road there. And- um, We're involved. Uh, it, it's, it's very recent. It's on Blueberry Fire Lane between Helsing and Highway H. 
Okay. A big one. So, so I'll have uh, those new guys go look for that would be great. I was that's on my list. On the main wire loop? Yeah. Yeah. And it's a big one. It goes all the way across. It's it's uh you've got to go through the forest to get around. get around it, which is pretty it's challenging. More on the side. It's more on the housing yeah. side. Okay. Yeah. So right. other than that, everything in Sealy Hills, we chainsawed, opened everything up. Uh, the graders are down on Tuscobia right now, working on that. It's going to take a little time. We have to make several passes. The Alliance purchased a commercial style grader this year for that purpose. And I just have one question. I'm not sure what this committee wants from me every month as a report, what kind of data. But uh, I'd like to know so that I can be prepared. The counter trick that would be great. Yeah, I'm very interested to see what that brings. We plan to move them around and and also hit some of the connecting uh, trail systems, you know, to the other counties to see where we are getting come before the counters. Just kind of yeah. We didn't. It didn't. was based more on you know talking to resort owners right. and to see what. Uh, you know who's coming there, up, yeah. and I mean it's it's just growing by leaps and bounds. It's it's. I'd like to know exactly what our numbers are, and you and I have talked about a survey, so mm -hmm. let's see. So, well, so we, so we, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, are you are you taking Don's place or? I I, I guess I am. <laughs> the, the, the last I heard there was. People were taking turns kind of internally. Well, the Alliance formed a government communications committee, which replaces Don's old position as the, the trail coordinator through the Alliance. Um, both sports have grown so much in recent years that we felt a committee would work better than just one person. Um, Don, Don did a tremendous amount of work but, um, you know, I think he had been in it for 20 some years, but back when he started, it was manageable for one person to do all that. Now we have a committee that handles a variety of, you know, complaints, uh, trail reroutes, new trails. We were just very busy to tell you the truth. And we are even encouraging other people to join our committee within the Alliance, just so that we have, all areas in Sawyer County covered, you know, so that we have people familiar with each trail system. So it's a work in progress. Okay. Well, if you got any issues, you so you know I'm the point of contact for the also. I gave her your cell phone. <laughs> yeah. well, I, well, I have. I, I've been on the trail all weekend. Who yeah. gave it to you? Yes, I. You're on my list to call Brian yeah, about a few things, things so, as well. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Um, because of, you know, like I said, if there's an issue with one of our trails that I'm on board, you guys can cross let me know. Sure, sure. But we appreciate the update each month, just what's going on. You're a big part of the economy, you know, in the county. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. I think uh, the ATVers uh, clearly spend a lot of money up here. I mean, they're not they're not shy of spending money. And this is quite a destination because of everything else that Hayward has to offer. You have groups of ATVers come up here and they'll ATV, but then they partake in all the other events that are going on in the area, and especially with so many more routes opening up and giving people access to downtown and, and to just riding on the road to go to a destination and restaurants to eat. It's uh, it's something we're pushing, pushing for. Hopefully, open up a lot more routes. Well, when just the governor goes to Shell Lake, and the news still comes here. <laughs> <laughs> the people are spoken. Right. <laughs> just keep it up. <laughs> okay. Thank you much. Sure. Um, let's see. On the non-motorized non trail, I passed out a letter from Ben Pop, and basically, it's the highlights there are they've opened up registration for the Brookie. Uh, the 1st of May, and they now have 3,000 already registered. They're looking at 12,000 total. Uh, this fall, again, there'll be a Brookie Trail Run. Uh, the half marathon is going to be the national championship. Um, and lastly, on the Lumberjack Bowl, 
they're installing now aluminum bleachers uh, with lights. So that'll be done for the summer. And so that'll be great. Okay, let's go on then to um, the Historical Society. Uh, have we heard from anybody? Stacy, do you know anything about that? She's off. She's on. Oh, I can give you an update okay. just because they met at the library last okay. Thursday night. So they had over 130 people show up for their monthly meeting because now I have to think of this gentleman's name. There's Guy a, Houston. You, thank you. He's <laughs> on he's on Facebook all the time to answering questions about Hayward history. And he was speaking. Gosh, it was it was a lot about was it Al Capone and the hideout. And, and yeah, and a hundred we had to move people from the meeting room to the main part of the library, the children's room, because there are so many. So they're doing they were pretty excited. And if they can keep that up, they should get yeah. some okay. some more keep, uh, yeah. fundraising Good. money. And also they had talked about, I think Stacy mentioned last month about the young guy who did a fantastic job fundraising for them. Mm -hmm. So, and I did talk with Donna Yackel and I will talk to her, my board meetings tomorrow, she's on my board, about having a regular rep. And let, is Stacy a member of their board? I don't know, she seems to know something about it. So. Okay, okay, I'll talk with Donna again about yeah having someone here because they are doing a lot and they do a and lot if, it is, is it, if it isn't every month every other month or every third month or something oh, okay. yeah. yeah 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 i will mention it okay you. good thank you okay let's move on then to future agenda items anything we should be talking about that put on the agenda for next month if not let's go to to um our new county chairman andy you want to bring anything you want to talk about not particularly, I just think this is a committee I probably am a little deeper in than others. So I've already been out to see Sherry and Chris at the Chamber of the um, Heavy Lake or the Visitors Bureau. I got a meeting with Jessica later this week. So I'm just trying to reach out to those uh, entities that uh, the county supports through these contracts. Um, I'll be around with the libraries eventually. Um, maybe for a future agenda item, there's some questions about housing. The uh, Russ, the Surrey County Housing Authority um, is not somebody that it's a separate entity from Surrey County, but Surrey County has funded it with uh, some ARPA dollars. So maybe that's somebody want to have give a report on what's happening with their housing units and vacancy rates to understand a bit more about what's going on with housing. So that is a significant issue in the community is the housing demand and lack of supply for certain certain levels. I don't know whether that petition is dead or are they going to appeal that? Uh, have you heard? That? And so voting shots thing with a trade apartment. Oh, yeah, oh have right. Have heard anything on that? No. Good. Okay. Anybody else have anything we want to talk about? Maybe does the Berkey plan on building any type of housing? Oh, they haven't talked about that. You know. That's um, an interesting thought. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people around. Yeah, they do. They do. Are they doing something with the village? That new village up at Town Mark? It's privately funded, though. They're not, the oh, Berkey's not, uh, right. not doing it. Uh, okay, thank you guys for coming. And we look forward to exciting meetings next month. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All week. Thank you, everybody. All week. <laughs> <laughs> you too.